Today I wanted to talk about negative interest rates. So what we mean by negative interest rates is the rate at which the central bank lends to the market, also known as the overnight cash rate. As you know, Australia's overnight cash rate is 0.25% and that is defined by the Reserve Bank as the effective lower bound. Uh, markets have been flirting with the idea of negative interest rates in a number of economies. Uh, the US and the UK really stand out and of course we know that Europe has had negative interest rates since 2014 and Japan has had negative interest rates for a long time as well. Uh, markets are predicting that by the first half of next year, uh, US interest rates will be down to zero, UK rates will be down to zero, uh, and New Zealand rates will be down to zero. Uh, whereas markets are quite confident that Australia will not be going to zero because the Reserve Bank's given them this effective lower bound. What we have to bear in mind, of course, is that the Reserve Bank is a long way from its objectives and expects to be a long way from its objectives right out to the end of its forecast period. So the forecast period that we get is June 2022. The Reserve Bank's objectives are a full, full employment, which we think is 4.5%, uh, and inflation comfortably within the 2 to 3% band, so let's say 2.5%. And yet at the moment, uh, the Reserve Bank is forecasting that by the middle of 2022, that's two years away, the unemployment rate will still be at 6.5%, and in inflation will be at one and a half percent. So under normal circumstances you would expect that the Reserve Bank would acknowledge that they have more work to do but of course they have not and they're saying and the governor has said recently as he did back in November and confirmed that in recent months that lowering the cash rate further would be extraordinarily unlikely uh, in terms of going into negative rates. So why is that? Why is, the gov why is the RBA so committed against that? The first argument was around strains in the banking system. Uh, well, if we look at that one, the, it's about two points. Firstly, would you get negative mortgage rates and negative retail deposit rates? Answer is no. If we went to a negative cash rate, it's clear that what, what we've seen in Europe is that these banks are still able to have positive retail rates, that's mortgage rates and deposit rates. The rates that go negative are the deposit rates that uh, institutions and large corporates receive and the rate that those entities uh, are charged when they borrow money. So they get a negative rate on borrowing money. But the retail part of the economy is protected and they still have positive rates. The other issue is around the return that banks get with their exchange settlement accounts with the Reserve Bank. Uh, why should they be penalised with negative rates when the main reason why exchange settlement uh, balances are so high is QE? Absolutely understand that. And so uh, a process of uh, uh, a threshold process is introduced whereby uh, on the core level of rates you don't, you don't get a negative rate. It's only in levels above that core level. And that's there to encourage banks to lend money out rather than leave money lazily deposited with the Reserve Bank. Um, the second argument is around the pension funds uh, and pension funds that would be impacted by negative bond rates. On that particular argument, I think it is true that in the countries that have got negative cash rates, they also have negative bond rates, but that's because those, in those countries are also buying bonds at negative rates right across the curve. Now it would be entirely feasible for Australia to have a negative cash rate, uh, but for the central bank not to be buying rates at net, buying bonds at negative rates right across the curve. And then the markets would have to decide if we have a negative cash rate now, that's stimulatory for the economy, that'll boost growth, that'll boost inflation. So why should we have negative bond rates right across the curve? So you could well have a situation where the cash rate was negative, but bond rates further out along the curve were actually positive, avoiding that issue for pension funds. The final concern is around confidence, and I have to say that I do find the confidence argument quite compelling. And that is, if negative interest rates existed in the economy, would businesses and workers and households believe that was a big negative for the outlook for the economy, uh, and even worse, believe that implied negative inflation? On the other hand, 
The European argument is that if rates are negative, it confirms the central bank's commitment to achieving their objective and going beyond normal, normal policy to do that. So it provides confidence in the commitment of the central bank. Um, and certainly the Reserve Bank that has been missing its targets for a long time and is now forecasting big misses for its targets for the next two years would benefit from a lot more confidence about its commitment to achieving its targets. But what are some of the advantages of having negative rates? And for a small open economy like Australia, the overwhelming advantage would be around the currency, around the Australian dollar. Just imagine if Australian entities banks, governments, corporates were borrowing in the global markets and offering a negative interest rate to do that. Of course, they would have to offer a much more competitive currency to attract borrowers. And consider people investing in the Australian market and having to receive a negative rate, how tempted they might be to take money offshore, further putting downward pressure on the currency. So I think an unambiguous benefit of negative rates would be a much more competitive currency. And as we're seeing at the moment, the Aussie dollar that's lifted from around 56 and a half cents to over 66 cents, uh, and is generally considered, including by Westpac, to be going significantly higher over the next 18 months, uh, a more competitive Aussie dollar would certainly help dealing with this inflation and unemployment challenge that the Reserve Bank has. Secondly, it would certainly be benefiting to uh, the corporate and institutional sector from the perspective of encouraging them to invest rather than leave money in cash balances when the return on the cash balances was negative and the cost of borrowing was negative. So this benefit that you would have uh, from, from rebalancing uh, lazy investment into productive investment would also be a key factor. So when I overlook the, when I assess the overall arguments, uh, given that the central bank governor is saying it is extraordinarily unlikely that we would have negative rates, it has to be Westpac's core forecast that rates will not fall any further. But when I look at the overall outlook and the costs and the benefits of adopting that negative rate policy, I have to believe that as things evolve over the next few years, and if they evolve more adversely than we're currently expecting, then the option of negative rates is likely to come back onto the policy agenda. So let me conclude by saying, don't rule negative rates out when we look at the policy debate over the course of the next few years. Thank you.